Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. Uh, I'm Dr. Nick Schmielkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute here in downtown Chicago. Um, today's episode is going to be a really important functional question. What is neuroplasticity? And the reason why this is so important is because this is how we can rehab a person's brain. Um, neuroplasticity allows us to learn a new skill whether that be to swing a baseball bat or to throw a ball or even to learn a new dance. But then it also allows us to learn new facts, like learn new facts and study in school. Um, and then more importantly, for when we are training or rehabbing brains, um, which is what we do every day here at the Neurologic Wellness Institute, it is super important in this rehab process because neuroplasticity allows us to work around damaged neurons or um, work to improve skills that um, may not be as good or as, as working as properly as it should um, in a person who, <clears throat> who has brain damage or who has had a concussion. And so we're just gonna talk very, uh, very basic on what is happening at a cellular or neuronal level. Um, in, in a healthy brain, in a healthy neuron, neuron circuit, and then how neuroplasticity kind of works to change. So I wanna start by just showing this paper here. So this paper is from 2017, and it's just looking at the, um, let me share my screen, sorry about that. And so this paper is from 2017. And so it is on the molecular mechanisms of neuroplasticity. And neuroplasticity has been studied for many years now, um, probably over 20 years. But the reason why I wanna show this paper is just because it has a really good definition right away here in the abstract. And that is neuroplasticity is the functional and structural alterations that meaning that functional is that we can't really see it on an MRI. Um, structural meaning that there's actual changes in, um, in the structure of these neuronal cells, these brain cells, um, in the brain enabling adaptation or change to the environment, to learning, to memory, and as well as rehabilitation after a brain injury. And so this is basically neuroplasticity occurs just as we grow up, when we're uh, an infant and growing through our first two years of life, we need to learn how to uh, roll over, sit, stand, walk, and all that is adaptations to the environment. The only reason why we learn to walk is because we want to move to get somewhere. And then at the same time, we go through learning in school and different memory aspects. And so this really allows neuroplasticity is so important in a, in a child as, as he or she grows throughout life. Um, but then it's also important for adults that are trying to learn new skills. Uh, you can teach a dog, an old dog, new tricks. It is possible. And this is all through neuroplasticity. And then at the same time, we use it every day in rehabilitation of brain injury, or even if there wasn't brain injury, we can still rehab it to, we can still rehab connections that may not be working as well um, to improve them and therefore take away certain symptoms of poor memory, memory loss, dementia, or migraines. There are many possibilities. And so let's go to this picture here. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about the neuron. And so the neuron is the brain cell. And so here you have the cell body and the nucleus inside the cell body. And the nucleus is what holds the DNA, uh, which can then encode for proteins. And proteins are what important, what are very important in making the cell function. And in, that's including neurotransmitters, which I'll talk about in a sec. And so we have the cell body. We have the axon, which is going to send a signal. The axon sends whatever signal that this neuron wants to send to a next or to a next neuron. At the end of the axon, it has axon terminals. Axon terminals are 
going to be connecting to this uh, postsynaptic neuron. Okay, and so when a cell body, when a neuron wants to send a signal, it goes down the axon, and then it's going to connect to a postsynaptic neuron through a synapse. This synapse is not touching anything, and so. Um, what happens is this electrical current that gets passed down through the axon is now converted into a chemical signal, which the chemical signal is um, a neurotransmitter um, like acetylcholine or glutamate that is then diffuses across this little membrane, this little synapse, and then activates the next neuron to then uh, produce a response. And so we have the cell body, we have the axon, the axon terminals, and then we also have these dendrites. So these dendrites are more of the sensory portion of the, of, the, of the neuron, and so they are receiving signals from another neuron. And when basically all of these signals that might be attached to these dendrites add up, then it re results in a signal from this neuron to the next one. Okay, so that's just the basics. And Around this axon, we have these myelin sheaths. Myelin sheaths that basically cover most of the axon, leaving these little holes here. These myelin sheaths are in the central nervous system, are derived from this oligodendrocyte. Okay. And but these myelin sheaths are like coating around the axon to improve the electrical conduction across the axon, kind of like a electrical cord that has a lot of insulation around it. If we didn't have the, the insulation around it, the signal would not go as fast. And so this insulation allows for the electrical signal to, to jump through these nodes of Ranvier, okay, jump through and down the axon, and that speeds up the conduction, makes us more efficient, okay? And then when it gets down here, then it's gonna activate the next neuron. And so, what are different ways that we can become, what are different ways that neuroplasticity can occur? And there are many of them, okay? And so, um, we'll talk about stuff on here that might not be on this photograph first, but there are these different chemical and protein responses to that the more you activate a neuron, the more efficient it becomes. That efficiency comes in a, a variety of ways. One is that this nucleus may make more of the neurotransmitter, make more of the neurotransmitter that's going to send the signal here at the synapse. And so what happens is this neurotransmitter is going to get stored here in these little axon terminals. And therefore, when the signal's sent, there's more uh, neurotransmitter released into the synapse. And therefore, there's a more efficient or more likely that, that um, signal is going to be sent. That's one way. Another way is that these axon terminals can sprout. So rather than just connecting to the neuron here, these can extend and connect to this dendrite over here or over here. And these spreading of these connections is making this diverge. So this electrical signal diverge and hit more neurons, whether it's the same neuron or even a neighboring neuron. Another way is that these myelin sheath can become more, more insulating. So after damage to a neuron, this damage causes the, these myelin sheath to, to possibly um, deteriorate or the damage and inflammation causes um, a decrease or thinning of these myelin sheaths. And so this oligodendrocyte can actually go and put down and layer in more of this myelin sheath. It can repair this myelin sheath because after an injury, if this is, there's thinning, well then the connection, the efficient electrical signal is not going as well. And so wrapping more insulation, more fatty insulation is going to help this electrical signal move across um, the axon. Another way that we can improve uh, neuroplasticity is by getting more of these dendritic spines. So on the dendrites, you have these little dendritic spines, and this increases the surface area of the dendrite to allow more of the axon terminals 
to be there. And so the more often that you activate this neuron, the more dendritic spines come and the more efficient this process is. This is why um, practice is going to make perfect and practice, perfect practice makes perfect because we are continuing to strengthen these connections by increasing more dendritic spines, laying more myelin sheath down, uh, sprouting more axon terminals, and therefore making this signal more efficient. And by making it more efficient, uh, it doesn't take as much energy, it is faster, and it will not cause symptoms when this neuron is trying to move, okay? Uh, is trying to send its signal. And so this is why practice, 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 as my dad would always say, is, is such a good model to have. So the next diagram I wanna show you is just another way that neuroplasticity can occur. And so here we'll talk about rerouting first. So new connections are made by, between active neurons to create alternate neural pathways. So here is what it kind of looks like maybe in, an, uh, in a normal brain. You have um, neuron one going to neuron two, neuron three, and it's sending the signal. And you have these alternate pathways that are there to just help with efficiency. After an injury, you may lose one of these neurons. And if you lose one of these neurons, this primary pathway is not there, but a secondary pathway can take over. And so this is where you can just reroute these connections through a different pathway but this different pathway doesn't work as well. And so we have to improve on that efficiency by making it work over and over and do that practice, okay? Another way is by sprouting new axon terminals. So I already kind of talked about this in the last one. So new axons and dendrite extensions allow for existing neurons to form new connections, okay? So before you have neuron A connecting here to neuron maybe C, and then making a connection. Neuron B connecting neuron D and making a connection. Well, if you have a damage to neuron A, we can still get activation of neuron C through a sprouting process, okay? So basically these axons were only attaching to this neuron, but because we lost this initial connection here, another neuron can take over that control and improve on this efficiency. Now, it's still not perfect because ideally this was probably best, but that doesn't mean that we can improve on this efficient process right here. And neuron B can take over the activities of neuron A, okay? And so by sprouting these new axon terminals, we're able to uh, continue to have functional outcomes and it just takes more practice for this to become perfect. So. Let's go back to the beginning. And so neuroplasticity is super important in everything we do. It's how we learn. It is how we make new memories. It is how we learn new facts. Um, and it is how we learn new skills. And so it is important as we age from when we're young to when we're old. And neuroplasticity doesn't stop. If you stop trying to learn new skills, then you're just going to continue working on the same loops on the same neurons and the neuronal circuits that you made when you were a child. But if you ever want to learn a new skill, neuroplasticity occurs. It happens. It works. And especially after a brain injury, whether it's a concussion, um, whether it's any other kind of inflammatory damage, we can improve on these circuits. And by improving on these circuits and making more or improving neuroplasticity, what can happen is we make functional connections occur. These functional connections make us better at what we're doing, and therefore those skills improve with no symptoms, whether those symptoms were headache or dizziness or nausea. It's all about having this good neuroplasticity from good neuroplasticity occurring. So um, that is all for today. Um, neuroplasticity. And so if you have any questions or concerns, please leave comments below. If you have any suggestions for future topics, again, please leave them below. I really appreciate uh, you tuning in today. And again, stay healthy. Thank you.